Okie dokie. If you've been watching my Remnant 2 build videos lately, you know that I generally prefer to go into DR where possible, explain how we're reaching that cap, what is wasteful, what is not, why we're choosing those things. And I have to admit, I was a bit taken aback because there's a staggering amount of people that thanked me for that information. And while I don't mean to make light of people's thanks, it does make a lot more sense as to why people are complaining about the difficulty in this game if they don't understand the concepts of damage reduction or effective health. So that is what I wanted to go into and cover today, so that way you guys can better understand how to modify your own builds in a way that will allow you to not get fucked into the ground by Venom, Annihilation, and whatever other boss you're hung up on. If you're wondering why the hell you should even listen to me, I'm the guy that went through and completed an entire Apocalypse campaign run, killing the bosses without shooting them and face tanking all their attacks. I'm also the guy that did an Apocalypse Annihilation melee kill without dodging or using a single relic. There's several things I want to talk about in this video, but we will start with the absolute basics. What is damage reduction and what is EHP? Damage reduction is pretty fucking obvious given its namesake. It reduces the amount of damage you take. So if you have 10% damage reduction and you take 100 damage, it's going to subtract 10 from that 100, meaning you receive 90 damage. Damage reduction in this game is calculated using two different types of damage reduction. Armor DR is calculated based off your total armor. While there's technically a way to calculate it with armor effectiveness, for my purposes it just doesn't fucking matter. If you use the full Lido Mark II set, along with the Labyrinth Gloves, that puts you at 220 armor. However, if you're using Fortify, that gives you 50% increased armor effectiveness. 50% of 220 is 110, this puts us up to 330 armor, resulting in 62.26 armor damage reduction. The other type of damage reduction we have, I'm going to call flat DR. It will show up in the advanced stats screen as just regular damage reduction. This is not your total damage reduction, and remember that it is not additive with armor DR, it is multiplicative. But all sources of flat DR, like armor, are additive with themselves. So if I have bark skin, which is the trait that gives you damage reduction 1% per point spent, 10 points max, that's 10% DR. And then let's say I have the fragment that is at the mythic level for 5% damage reduction. This will add another 5% to our total flat DR, but the 5% and the 10% are not multiplicative with each other. This seems to be a very common misunderstanding. For shits, I'll just throw in some other stuff here. But note that this total DR is not just 62.26 plus 25. They are multiplicative. The formula is 1 minus armor DR times 1 minus flat DR, and then 1 minus all of that. And if you use these two in conjunction, you can work yourself all the way up to the 80% DR cap. And yes, 80% is the cap. There's a lot of build videos out right now that are just slapping on damage reduction willy-nilly, wasting upwards of 20 plus total DR, and it makes no sense because you're able to take away a ton of that and spec for damage instead if you would like. Before we move on, though, I did want to address a quick note on phrasing, because the dumb fuck from my prior videos is probably going to come in the comments again, repeating the same shit that reduced incoming damage is different from DR, and it allows you to exceed the DR cap. That's a load of shit. Reduced incoming damage is just flat DR. That's it. We could look at Crystal Heart, which gives us 25% reduced incoming damage. It still populates in the flat DR section of our advanced stats as does Bisected Ring, which increases damage received. That doesn't say it's DR, but it is. It's just negative DR. If you put on Bisected Ring, it populates as negative 25. And if you use Bisected Ring and then use Crystal Heart, you have zero damage reduction, which means the negative 25% from Bisected and the plus 25% from Crystal Heart are canceling out. They wouldn't do that unless they were the same stat. If anyone ever tries to tell you that reduced incoming damage is anything other than DR, they are insane. Now, reduced enemy damage... That is something different, and we'll cover that later in the video. But I did want to just quickly address reduced incoming damage and increased damage received, because they are the exact same thing. Now that we've explained the basis for how damage reduction is calculated, let's move on to EHP. Let's say I have no armor, I'm just buck naked, and let's say, for shits and giggles, I have a ring that gives me, I don't know, 50% damage reduction, but let's say I also only have the minimum amount of health, 100. So if I have 100 health, I have no DR, that means I have 100 effective health. If I have 50% DR on a ring, that means I have 200 effective health, because that means I would need to take 200 damage with that 50% DR in the equation in order to actually receive 100 damage in order to die. Effective health is just the amount of damage it would take to one-shot you, or the amount of damage that it would take to kill you without healing. But there's a staggering difference in EHP the more DR you have, since obviously if we go from 50% HP, which is one half, meaning that it's going to give you a, a times two multiplier, if we go to 80% damage reduction, that's going to result in 500 EHP, since 80% is four-fifths, meaning that you're going to get a five times multiplier. This is why it is incredibly important to get the damage reduction up to the cap 
or as close as you can to it. However, this does not mean that damage reduction is the only way to bolster your effective health. Obviously, health is a pretty important part of that. And if we do something like max vigor, and then if we put on the mythic health fragment, this puts it at 149.5. And this allows us to go from 500 EHP to 747. So you're able to take almost 750 damage in one attack before you would actually die. EHP is basically a measure of how tanky you are in your ability to take a hit. That said, while DR isn't the only or the greatest way to raise your EHP, this doesn't mean that health is the greatest way either. And I want to give a quick example here because there was a creator who I'm not going to name because they know exactly who they are. It's plainly obvious that they watch my videos and that's fine. I understand what they were going for here and I'll explain that in just a moment. But they looked at my summoner build, which by the way is not perfect. It wasn't meant to be. It's not min max. But they looked at my summoner build and instead of trying to maximize their EHP by hitting the DR cap, they instead decided to crank up their health as much as they could. Their accessory and three of their rings are for cranking up their health, and then they also went with as much armor as they possibly could as well. So instead of 149.5, they added basically 100 health up to 247, and instead of 330 armor, they added up to 387.8, which gives them 65.97 armor DR, and then that 250 health, resulting in 807 0.32 effective health. Now at a glance, some of you might be comparing it to the summoner build that they looked at and seeing that they actually have more EHP, but they don't, because I use Blood Bond. And I'll cover Blood Bond and Song of Aethir in a moment, but Blood Bond actually gives me more effective health than they do. The concept behind their idea is simply that because they have more health, it will result in more relic healing for them and their allies because they're a medic, since it is a percent heal, and with more health that means more healing. The problem is that increasing the heal for yourself and your allies doesn't mean you're any more tanky if you still get one shot. Now I'm not trying to say that my build is really that much better, but I'm gonna blow your minds here. This was not meant to be a perfect build. It was a meme build. This was not min-maxed, meaning I could take off say, the Soul Guard ring, I could keep Blessed Ring on, I could put 9 points into Bark Skin, and on my Amulet and on my Ring, I could put on Navigator's Pendant and Seal of the Empress, which would give me 40 plus health, with the Health Fragment on our Relic, that actually gives us a 15% increase, so it's a 46 increase total in our health, and this would put our health up to 195.5, which changes our effective HP, if we went the Health Route, to almost 300 higher than theirs. This is why it is extremely important, when you are trying to min-max your DR and your EHP, that you not only look at damage reduction and your armor, but also your health. Because I have 50 less health than they do, and I have 60 less armor than they do, but I have 300 more EHP than they do. And if I put on Song of Aethir, that changes to 500. Again, I'm not trying to bag on that creator for putting out that build, but I will say that I hope you guys know. This is exactly how I can tell when you guys copy builds. Because changes were made, but they weren't meaningful changes. The build was not improved upon, You've just sidestepped the equivalent result. To cover Song of Aethir and Blood Bond real quick though, both of these are separate ways to reduce damage that are calculated outside of damage reduction. Song of Aethir is a mod that you shoot at the ground that makes enemies deal 15% less damage. This happens before your DR calculation even hits, so if an enemy shoots you and they're going to do 100 damage, they instead deal 85 damage, and then your 80% DR applies to that 85 damage and you take whatever is left. This allows us to go from 977 EHP all the way up to 1150. It is a 3% functional DR increase, and while that may not seem like much, it's obviously a fat chunk of EHP. Blood Bond only results in a 2% functional DR increase, but that still allows us to add 100 EHP right there on its own. Blood Bond is something that makes it so, if you have minions up, when you take damage, the damage you receive gets 10% of it split off and shared between your minions. This does not mean that each minion takes away 10% of your damage received. It means that you take 10% and split it evenly between your minions. Having more does not make this any better, other than maybe from the perspective of keeping them alive and sharing the damage between more than one minion. It is important to note that this is only a 2% functional increase when you already have 80% DR. If I take away some DR, it does more, and that's just because it's allowed to do more since the DR isn't there. But if we do have 80% DR, then Blood Bond is a 2% increase, and Song of Aethir is a 3% increase. But when combined, once again, it will be slightly less than 5%, because the more ways we add to reduce damage, the less they are allowed to do when working with each other. 
each other. But this does not mean that they are any less effective or any less important. Now I want to clarify that they will only appear to be less effective when used in conjunction with DR sources in an absolute sense. But in a relative sense, their DR values do not change. And even though in an absolute sense, it appears like they're adding very little, like this dipshit who told me I'm only getting about a 2-3% to increase with blood bond, every single percent of DR you gain is more valuable than the last, if that wasn't made painfully obvious by the difference of 500 EHP. Obviously for people doing no-hit runs, shit like that, this won't matter at all. But for people who have wanted to understand why they're getting absolutely fucking murked, this is why. Because your damage reduction is not capped, and you don't have enough health to maximize on your EHP. This may not have been the greatest explanation, I'm not gonna try and pretend like this was flawless, but hopefully this explanation with this sheet, which I will share with you guys, you can find the link down in the description below, will be enough to help you unfuck whatever your current build is and allow you to better tank the apocalypse difficulty. Or nightmare if that's what you're struggling with. I also genuinely hope that creators will use this in the future to make builds that make sense, instead of builds that just feel good.